Good afternoon, Gerard, and uh, thank you very much for uh, coming in and doing this interview today. And uh, I, you know, it, it, it is a, obviously a great opportunity uh, to be able to uh, discuss about your successful career uh, as a commercial artist and also as a music artist as, as well. I guess, how did your journey coming to Canada all begin? Oh my goodness, that is a question. <clears throat> I was a kid, like years ago, I was 12 years old when we came here. We were supposed to go to Boston, U.S. of A. Somehow my parents' papers were not in order and we ended up in Toronto. Nobody knew at that time in 1955. I almost were like, where was Toronto? <laughs> <laughs> So instead of Boston, we came here, and uh, my parents had to post us three kids to school, so we just stayed, and that was it. And it was just like that? Just like that. Oh, my heavens. And being from the south of France, that was a bit difficult to get used to. <laughs> <laughs> Especially the first winter. <laughs> oh, my goodness. <laughs> how was your first winter? Do you remember that? Well, for us kids, it was great. We, you know, we learned how to skate, and uh, <laughs> you know, uh, we dressed winter like the other kids, and uh, it was great. Well, you know, how, what is interesting is how did you get the spark or this idea that you wanted to become like a commercial artist? No idea. <laughs> you know, at that time, uh, you were in school, public school, then you went to high school, and there was supposed to be a department, I remember, that was supposed to help kids, direct them to where they, what they might want to be in the future. Well, I mean, they couldn't help me at all. I didn't have a clue. So I took machine shop. Machine shop. I took machine shop. I ended up repairing microscopes. Now, isn't that interesting? Yeah. Uh, I, I remember we, and I went to all the hospitals, all the hematology labs and all that, and I got to know all the doctors and all that. Even the, the pathologist once at this hospital said to me, Gerard, look, uh, I need your help because I'm short of nurses. We just had three people die on, uh, on the highway, and I need someone to hold the bed so I can undress me. It was the middle of winter. Oh my that God. was my first three autopsies that I witnessed. <laughs> Did you have a nickname back then? Did the kids ever give you a nickname? Oh yeah, I don't want to repeat. <laughs> <laughs> At that time, immigrants were not very well regarded. Uh, Did you have a favorite subject when you studied? I uh, studied where for again? Public school, high school? Uh, when you, well, at high school. Was there any Oh yeah, well, public school, I wanted to be an astronomer. I wanted to be a, a jet fighter pilot, you know, like kids, you know, oh, yeah, dream, yeah. you know. In high school, I had a lot of problems. Uh, I didn't know what I wanted to be. That's why I took machine shop. Right. Easy subject to pass, right? And uh, we had one subject of art in high school. That was it, one yeah. subject. One subject. And uh, my teacher, I remember John Bennett, who was a very well-known artist, Yeah. said to me, Gerard, look, uh, <clears throat> you know, your, your stuff is not bad. Why, why are you taking machine shop? Why don't you come in my department? And uh, you won't flunk a uh, grade. I'll put you in second year. I said, an artist? You want me to be an artist? I hear artists are just starving, you know, like, I don't be an artist. I just want to finish high school and leave. <laughs> well, what was your first job when you left high school? Oh, God. I had so many jobs. <laughs> was it the best with... job you had or the worst job? Well, uh, they were all about the same level because as long as I was making money, you know. Uh, I, was, I remember this one place, I was lifting carpets on Young Street, those pavilions. They were selling oriental carpets. Right. Very well known. I was lifting carpets for 24 bucks a week. $24, isn't that amazing? But gas at that time, I remember, was 32 cents a gallon. <laughs> so everything went in proportion, I guess. Well, in addition to being paid the money, obviously, you needed money. How, again, did you, you were influenced in getting into, into art college? How did that all begin? Yeah, if another just came by. <coughs> I don't know if I should call it by mistake or by chance or what. I just he just fell into it. I just fell in because I didn't I didn't know what to do with myself. You know, like to want to be an artist is one heck of a decision because you know your artists don't have a good rap. You know, I mean, you know, you're a starving artist, you're a Sunday artist, you're you're a con artist. <laughs> Well, I'll tell you something then. Was there anybody that you looked up to or anybody that that made uh, you sort of interested getting into the field? I had no clue. Well, you I know, that's amazing. I had no clue. Well, I must ask you then, what makes a successful artist today? Perseverance, 
Yeah. Keep trying, keep trying, because you're you're in a in a, in a subject matter here called art, and that's a tough thing. Yeah. Okay? Uh, if you just want to go to school, and I, as far as I'm, I went to the Ontario College of Art. Yeah. And <clears throat> if you wanted to take fine art, meaning being a fine artist, then good luck at the end. You're just gonna be a bohemian, right? Sure. Uh, then everybody went and took advertising. Because that's the only chance that you got that you might get a job, except there was one problem there. No agency would hire you because they ask you, what experience do you have? Right. But if you don't hire me, I'm not going to have any experience. experience. It's it's like today. It's a catch-22. Yeah, exactly. You know, you made yourself uh, a name for yourself with your artwork on the waterfronts. Uh, What type of waterfronts were you working on? Well, that also came by chance. Okay. At that time, I was an art director. I was, I was very lucky. I ended up, uh, after Ontario College of Art, I ended up uh, as a junior art director at the second biggest agency in Canada called Foster Advertising. Right, I remember that. So then I was there two and a half years. Then I went to McConnell Advertising as a full-pledged art director. And I had my own accounts and all. And one of the account execs, at Foster, uh, McConnell Advertising had a sailboat here on the lake. Okay. And one Friday afternoon, beautiful, said, look, Gerard, yeah, with a few friends, so we'll have a case of beer and we'll take my sailboat and we'll go on the lake. So we went up and down the lake and I said, oh, you know, Toronto didn't look like anything like it does today. So I said, well, you know, like it's got a CN Tower, didn't have the dome at the time. So I said, maybe I should draw this thing, you know, to call it on the waterfront. Now, how did I call it on the waterfront? Because it was on the waterfront. Yeah. But I thought of that movie from Alan Brando called On the Waterfront. Right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, believe it or not, it just went nuts. So would you say that's one of your favorite landscapes would be obviously waterfronts? No, it's just one of the things it's just that one. just developed. Uh, with this one, I ended up being the official artist of Expo 86 in Vancouver because of these waterfronts. Right. And I'd be flying back and forth first class. Oh, that was wonderful, man. <laughs> and uh, they, they printed so many of these posters. I did three paintings altogether. They had all the printing presses in Vancouver going, and they also used some U.S. printing presses. They were doing so much of it. Okay. You know, you mentioned that you enjoy traveling. Does that help you in your creativity? It might and it might not. Yeah, the, the beauty of the world is incredible. Oh, yeah. I mean, when you see the world and you see a beautiful landscape in front of you, yeah, you want to sketch it or you want to, you, you, or you want to photograph it for a later painting, you know? Uh, all these things, um, yeah, it does help. Is there sure. any particular country that inspires you the most when you're doing a... It depends what continent. Okay. Like uh, South America, my favorite... By the way, I packed it all over the world again. So you've seen everything? That's the only way I could go. I didn't have much money, right? And at that time, it was very cheap to do that. Uh, the, for example, South America, my most favorite country was Peru, Machu Picchu and all that. Uh, in uh, Southeast Asia, I saw so much poverty. I don't know which country I like best. In Europe, practically, oh, God, I loved every country in Europe. Well, I heard a little story regarding an Egyptian army train. Does that oh. ring a bell? Well, when I was in Cairo, uh, I flew uh, British Airways from London to Cairo, and uh, everybody wants to do the Nile, but most people take a cruise on the Nile. Right. I couldn't afford a cruise, man. <laughs> so there was a train going right by the side of the Nile, like a, a railway track, right? The train. And uh, so I go to the train station and I see this train there and I'm asking around. And people on there say to me, why don't you come with us? We're going down the Nile in broken English. I say, you kidding? I can just hop on and <laughs> hop off. <laughs> and I did and it was, a, it was an army train. An I, army an train. An army train, <laughs> Egyptian <laughs> army. And all these kids were like young. There were, there were uh, what do you call these things, these uh, uh, sugar cane. Right, okay. You know, there were, these, yes. there were rats on the floor, and, uh, and I did the whole evening though, uh, and morning along the Nile. Oh, so I, I tell everybody, listen, I went on, you know, I, was all, I didn't tell them it was an army train. <laughs> <laughs> I, said, I went right along the Nile to the Aswan Dam. 
Uh, you know, you receive such uh, recognition. Can you tell me, tell us, you know, about them? Just give us a bit of your recognition. I, I know that you've. Um, well, let me. Why don't you explain? <laughs> well, one of the things that I do, Ian, is I donate a lot of my work to nonprofit organizations. Yeah. Because we're in the publishing business, we do and most of the stuff I paint gets published in limited edition prints, posters open edition print, art cards, the gift industries, mugs, coasters, t-shirts, even fridge magnets, you know? As long as they don't put my work on toilet paper, I'm happy. <laughs> <clears throat> so as a result, uh, I donate a lot of these things for fundraising. Okay. And they do quite well with them. And I've seen a lot of your work out there, and it, it really is. You know, you, didn't you uh, also was nominated for the Order of Canada as well? Yeah, I heard, uh, you know, <laughs> you're supposed to know. I heard uh, that, uh, but uh, nothing happened, so I guess I flunked there. <laughs> well, the fact that you even got recognized. I also amazing. heard it was the Order of Ontario. <laughs> oh, the Order of Ontario, okay. <laughs> but I did get a medal for this philanthropy that I was talking to you about at Queen's Park. Uh, it, uh, because Canada is a bilingual, mm -hmm. official bilingual country, <clears throat> actually Canada should be official in many languages today, but uh, again, because it's one of the official countries of uh, French English in the world, I, well, because of my philanthropy, I get a medal at Queen's Park called uh, Chevalier de l'Ordre de la Pléiade. That's a medal that comes out of Paris that if you're worthwhile, if you do philanthropy, then they will award you this medal. Well, that's quite an honor then. Yeah, that was, that was, I was happy, very happy with that. You know, what <coughs> on earth are you going to be working on next? What is your new project? Well, I don't know, you know, whatever comes. <laughs> <coughs> I had, uh, <coughs> I had an accident, you know, uh, a few years ago in, in my car. And I was concussed, as they say. I had a concussion. concussion. And it's amazing how long it takes, especially when you get older, as I am now. <laughs> it's amazing how long it takes to get back into the swing of things. Because when I do these things, when I paint, I got to sit there, pretend this is my drawing table. I go, you know, I go like that. And, uh, you know, I got pain now because I've been doing this for like a long, long time, many years. And I got pain in my wrist, you know, so. And then this concussion made things worse. So I've been sort of saying no to, to projects. Even they're doing some online uh, interviews, you know, and, uh, and my website and all that. But uh, the doctors told me that, listen, you got to take it easy for a while. So um, I'm getting back into it slowly. Well, Gerard, I want to thank you very, very much. This has thank been you, wonderful. Thank you, my friend. Have a great day. Thank you.